Asante sana. You may be seated. Asante. Let's wor- let's give a praise and a appreciation to our worship team and the band. We thank you for for that incredible worship. I tell you. We also appreciate Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice Mamacita, and we are grateful that they have allowed us to speak at this platform today. Thank you to Pastor Beatrice and Pastor John, Pastor Richard and Alex, if you're here, and Pastor Harriet and your your lovely groom, <laughs> Pastor Brian, Pastor Waku, Santi, and Bether. Thank you for your messages last night. Thank you. We appreciate you. My name is Reverend Rhonda Clark, and this is my handsomely husband, Dr. Ron Clark. Let's give it up for him, huh? The man, the man, the man. We've been here for the last 10 years helping with the Maasai and some Buru peoples. So keep us in your prayers. We just are praying to do a very special thing in their lives. So um, back in America, we are blessed with three wonderful children five grandchildren, amen, who bring us immense joy. I know my husband doesn't look a day over 40, so we, we've got to work on those numbers. But I want to take a minute to introduce my husband to you. He has, for those of you that do not know, he's been in the ministry for almost 45 years. He's been a pastor for 30, amen, I know. <laughs> do you need me to hold you up? <laughs> We've been missionaries for the last 15 years, and he serves as president of the Maasai Trust, and we're just working tirelessly to make a difference in the lives of these folks who are marginalized and who need our assistance. But I can truly attest that this man here tirelessly works to try to make those lives better. Amen? Amen. And so we could use your help. But he also has dedicated his life to a higher education. He has received his bachelor's degree in education, his master's degree in theology, his doctor of ministry from Oral Roberts University, and finally his PhD in organizational management and leadership from Aiden University. That's so many degrees, I think you have a fever. I think you have a fever. Yes, I think so. Too many, too many. But you can visit us on the website at themasaitrust.org. That's all one word, themasaitrust.org. So look us up. Drop in a, a shilling if you have. We would appreciate your help so much. We have been members of DCI Kasarani Zimmerman and Shiloh. Yes. We love our church, and we pray that you make this your church as well. Amen. And if you're following us online, Type in a comment, amen, and let us know where you are looking at us from all over the world. We would love to know where you're from, so just drop in the comments where you're from, and we'd love to get back to you and pray for you, so please put those prayer requests in. Buwana Sifiwe, amen. I want to share a scripture with you today to help you with today's message. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 8. And it says this, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one of us uh, give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Turn to your neighbor and say that, God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Amen? So God delights in cheerful givers who act with a joyful heart and a willing spirit. When we give grudgingly or out of duty, we miss the delight of aligning our hearts with God's generous nature. Sharing with others should be seen as a privilege and not a burden. Boana Sifiwe. Amen. So let's lift our hands towards Dr. Ron and let's pray over him today and let God anoint his words. So 
Holy Spirit, we just ask you to come. We know that you are already in this place. We ask you to align our hearts with your desires. We want to reap a harvest from sowing and giving. Anoint my husband to speak as your oracle. Give Dr. Ron wisdom as he brings us the word and helps us to understand the joy of giving from our own heart. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray and all God's people said, amen. amen. Can we just stand and give Dr. Ron a, a praise clap and welcome him to the podium. Santi. She wants to. <laughs> oh, the price you pay being a husband is just. You know, that, it keeps me p preaching. You know, it doesn't seem like 45 years. 45 years. That's older than some of you are. How many of you are younger than 45? That's most of the church. I'm one of the older ones. Hallelujah. You know, I remember um, we sent um, we sent uh, our Rhonda's mom and dad on a the the same trip that uh, Bishop and Mama Sita are on up to, up to Alaska, and that was one of the most memorable trips they ever had in their life. So pray for them that they'll be refreshed and uh, be kept safe and be brought back to us in a few weeks, renewed and refreshed and ready for the, for the, the second half. Amen? Amen? Today I'm going to teach on it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is not, um, you know, I, I, I see a struggle in the body of Christ, uh, maybe in Africa uh, more than other places, not just wanting. You know, you, you see a white man, you, you want them to give you something. Um, and I don't mind being a source because it just means I'm going to get something back. But there's, there is a need within the body of Christ for us to enjoy being a blessing to other people. You reap what you sow. In fact, you reap more than you sow. Now, and I, I, I was thinking when Rhonda was talking about our children, the, the, how much fun we had at Christmas. You know, my, my kids would give me some of the craziest gifts, I, you know. But just to see the smile on their face, I think uh, Amanda, my daughter, gave, gave me a, a, a pair of socks that I wouldn't even wear in the bedroom. They, they, were, they had bells on them. And they looked like the Grinch or something. And I, I just, but she was so excited. I think she was about three or four years old. And she said, oh, Daddy, you... I, I knew you wanted those. I knew you. I knew you did. And I'm thinking you've lost your mind. But uh, uh, 
how many of you parents get a, a real enjoyment out of blessing your children? And if they never give you anything other than themselves, it's, it's a blessing to be a giver. And I think many Africans miss out when they just, I don't, I don't know if it's an expectation or a, 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 a bad teaching, but I, 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 there are probably people in this room that have more money than me. Now, I'm never going to look poor. Are you with me? I was raised by a very wealthy father. He invented the first cell phone for the Saudi royal family and for the U.S. military. It was a, 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 I saw a phone in, inside of his car, and I thought he had lost his mind. It was back in the 80s, early 90s. Just didn't, you know, he, he was a, a genius. He, he, in, he invented the guidance system for the Apollo spacecraft that took, took us to the moon. He, he invented the, the guidance system for the Pershing missile, which kept America safe through the Cold War. He, desi he, he designed and built the first cruise missile. My, my, my dad was a genius and, and was rewarded and blessed with much. But as Paul said, I've, I've learned to live with a lot. But I've also learned to live with little. Rhonda and I, when we came to Africa, we... I, I don't think I'll ever live in America again. I may, but I don't think I will. I think I'll spend my last day here. I want to be wrapped in Maasai blankets and stuck out under an acacia tree out there and, and, and uh, say bye. I, you know, I, I'd just soon do that than, than go home. But we came here to be givers. I, I, I need $2 million right now to help the Messiah. 140,000, we estimate, have lost their lives to starvation and famine and drought. That during the, didn't you have a, um, a census in 2019? At that time, there was 1.2 million Maasai, smallest tribe in Kenya, really. Samburu is less, say 300,000. But of those 1.2 million, by here, here it is four years later, uh, they're now down to somewhere between 960,000 and 950,000, somewhere in there. And they lose about 64 Maasai die a day from starvation. And you don't know it, if I hadn't told you. Because they, they're not going to talk about that. For some reason, that doesn't make news. But the death of his precious ones are, should be important to us all. And, and do you know how much they give to Kenya? They're, they're, I think they are responsible for much of your, your uh, you know, people coming on holiday. They don't come to see the, the Kambas. They're not here to see the Kissy or the Tessos or the Mijikondas. Not even the Lul or the, maybe the Luya, they'll see a few of the Luya. <laughs> but how many of you 
directly or indirectly, owe your job to the tourist industry. And if that stopped, that's 12% of your budget that would stop zip if the Messiah are gone. And they've, they're, are, they're in a, what they call an, an extinction level event. They're losing so many so fast that they may not be able to turn that around and I'm just not, I'm not willing to let go of those people. A few years ago, they made me a, an elder. I'm the only white one, I think, they, they said that they knew of. And I sit and listen to them, and they're, they're, they're precious people. I love everybody. I'm not, I'm not if, if, you're, if you're combat, don't get mad at me. Don't, don't start throwing rocks. But they need our help. They, 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 don't, they don't have anything out there. The, you know, we're in an area where it's 15 miles to the nearest school. I mean, 15 kilometers to the nearest school. And kids just can't walk that far. Let me tell you a story. There was a, and I, I heard this from an elder that his granddaughter is 17 and she had twins. But because she had not eaten in so long, she couldn't produce milk. And the twins were drinking water. And she had to walk eight kilometers each day to and eight kilometers back, bringing water for their family every, every day carrying the babies and carrying the water. And one morning she got up and her breakfast was one piece of bread and she had no tea so she would drink hot water and then she'd wrap those babies around her and go. And she got up that morning and it's about four o'clock in the morning and the two, ba two little girls were holding each other and had gone to be with Jesus. If you're a mother, I told my mother, she's 89, and she wept. Basil, you know where that is. That's on the way to Namanga. Isn't it, Basil? They have one medical clinic, and it has one worker, and it's uh, a white lady, I think, um, from, from America. There is no medicine out there, no medical care. There are 400,000 that live in in. Kajo County, and let's say Southern Kajo, Kajiado County, and let's say live near Kajiado Town or 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 Kitengela. They don't. That's those people live like our relatives lived 200 years ago. There's no medicine. One girl that was in Maparasha, her baby went breech. And the midwife there could, didn't have the talent to get the baby turned. And, and they, it took her almost four hours to get to Kajado Town. And by the time she got there, both of the baby and the mother were gone. Every day. Every day. So pray for us. I, I never expected at 68 that I would, would not be with my grandchildren and... You know what I'm saying? I, I, I didn't expect to be here. But I'm glad to be here. To help those people. 
So I just need to, just two million. If anybody here wants to go to our website, the Montrachtrust.org and give two million, I'll, I'll accept it today. It, it would be nice and it would be spent by tomorrow to feed those people. And they're a mirror of what's happening in a lot of places. So I appreciate your prayers. You, you treat Rhonda and I like we're family and I appreciate that very much. Everybody has to have a church, amen? So would you keep us in your prayers and, the, and those people? Amen. Did I give you a scripture? All right, Acts chapter 20 and verse 35. I want you to leave church today ready to cheerfully give. Acting like it's Christmas time all the time. And you're mom and dad. And you're giving and being a blessing and enjoying it. What does it say, honey? I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You must support the weak. Everybody look at me. You must. There is no option. You must. Support the weak. Did, did, is, does your Bible say something different? No. Must? Does it, does it say it's an option? Only on Thursdays? No, you must support the weak. And then it says, Jesus said, the, the Lord loves the what? Do you know that's not in the Bible except there? You can't find it in the Gospels, but he said it because John says, uh, the last chapter of the book of John says that many things that Jesus said and did are not recorded in the book. But Luke said, Jesus said, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And then I want, to, I want you to jump over to... Uh, our, that, that dear lady that reminds me of my grandmother. Where was that again, in Rhonda? The, uh, Mark 12, 41 through 44. Read that for me, sweetie, if you can find it. Mark 12, 41 through 44. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which makes a quadrant. And so he called his disciples on himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to their treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. She gave away her lunch money, her two cents. Have you ever seen, um, I, I, think, I think you all have, do you, do you have lottery here? where you go waste your money and buy a lottery ticket and don't get anything? Well, somebody, you know, one guy gets something and they give him a big check. You know, the, the, the check, it's like this big. You know, I, I got a million shillings, you know, and they, they, they show, and he stands with that. He ain't gonna take that to the bank. There's no way, what, how would you get it through the window? <laughs> but that's the way the rich give they want their name on it they, they want to be known as the as giving and what they're giving out of is is their surplus 
They never, the rich man never gives enough that he can say, I've given all that I've had. Now, a couple of times in our ministry, Rhonda, Rhonda has, has said to me, honey, where is all of our money? Uh, I gave it. So a couple of times in my lifetime, I've given everything away. Do you know that following that, I've received more than I've ever had in previous years? God doesn't, if you give all you have, God's going to be given all he has to you. That's the key to getting, is giving. Now, Jesus, I can imagine him with the 12 sitting there at the temple watching the big checks, you know, come through and, and they'd hire a band or something to, to announce to everybody that big shot so-and-so is giving in the offering and they're dumping it in the, through the, there was a hole in the wall of the, of the, of the temple and they would dump their offering in and, and, and he's just giving his pocket change. Have you ever seen a man that he reaches it in his pocket and he pulls out about you know, a wad about like that, you know, and, and he's got maybe two, three hundred thousand shillings there and it, he gives you, you know, it's just pocket money. And then you've got people in this church that give everything they have. It's not the amount, it's the heart. Now, my grandmother, I, bless her heart, she'd come hear me preach. She loved it. That, that woman loved to hear me preach. And the church loved her. Oh, they loved her. But she walked with a walker. And people would bring the offering down, and she'd come, she'd walk. And we'd have to wait for her because everybody was already, a thousand people had given and she's still working her way to, to, the, to the bucket. And when she got there, she would open up her little change purse. Just a little, do you know what I'm saying? And dump it in and close it back. And then we'd wait for granny to get back to the chair. And then everybody would cheer. That woman, every time she went to church, would give everything that, was, that she had in, in her purse. You know, I, I have a, a, a sense that some of you are entering your year of breakthrough. Amen. If you get the things that I've been teaching, it seems like every sermon except one I've taught on giving here. But if you get this down and in your heart and give, give cheerfully, not because you have to, but because you want to. And sometime give a big offering. Like, like you're, you, I mean, pastor needs a billion too. How much is that in dollars? Can you, anybody know how to change? Is it, what is it, a buck? Huh? 12 million. 10, 10 million dollars. We, we got to get. We're, we're going to have to step up. Do you know what I'm saying? To, to raise ten million dollars and plant five churches—that's an incredible goal to have. And we're going to do it, aren't we? Yes. Mom and I are are praying about what we need to do for that. You need to pray, God, what is it you want me to give? Now, I know that I, I can, uh, do you, is that enough? Do you want more than that? But if you have needs 
that are not being met by what you have, you are going to have to give more to get because what you have is not enough. How many of you, the money that you already have right now is not enough to meet your needs? Then, then if, it does, if it's not enough to meet your need, you might as well give it. It ain't going to do anything anyway. You're just going to complain about it. So one Sunday, do a give everything offering. And just say, hey, God, here it is. And you watch what God does for you. He loves to see you love. Take care of his business. Do you remember the first sermon I preached here? I said, if you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. You take care of God's man, God's going to take care of your man. It's just the way it works. And, and what's wrong with your, your, your media, your, your television and papers? Every time they talk, they, they, they talk about, it's all negative. Talking about preacher so-and-so got a new car. What? Preacher so-and-so has a, has a too big a house. And if they would finish the sentence, they'd say, and I'd live in it in a minute. Just give it to me. We, we, we cannot be greedy. We, we can't just think of ourselves. I, I hope, Pastor, look, if you, I, I've been to your pastor's house or your, your, your bishop's house once. Twice, maybe one time, I can't remember. And, and I think he needs a better one. If it were me, I, but don't become greedy. Rejoice with those who rejoice. If they get a new car, praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, I want you to have a new car. Now, some of you didn't even turn. You look straight at me and say, I'm not going to do that. I refuse to say that. I want that new car. I've been waiting. Well, listen, you're giving it. Go, go get your pro box. It's all right. You give enough to get a pro box. But don't become envious of your, of your neighbor. Rejoice with them. And if they lose, if they lose something and, and are robbed or, or something's taken from them, then help them get it back. Yes. So I'm so sorry you went through all of that. Your house burned down. Well, I'm going to get the neighbors and we're going we're gonna to help you build that house back and, 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 and help you have a place to stay. Right. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever done that for me. Build my neighbor a house. I don't even like him. Sometimes we're the problem. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not talking to anyone specific, but, but as I look at eyes, people look at me, they're, no, don't know. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. God loves you. He sent me 8,000 miles. 8,000 miles from my house where it used to be. We sold it and gave the money away. So the Messiah could have more. So why would you give your house away? Because the Lord said to. And I obeyed him. And God's going to bless me one day. Amen. He's going to take care of me. And if I need something to eat. How many of you would invite me over to have something to, to eat? You'd let me come to your house. 
So we're not going to starve to death. You'd probably let me sleep on the couch or put Rhonda on the couch and me on the floor. I don't know. I just sense that something's changing in this church and an attitude towards money. Money is not your God. You, the, the more you bless Bishop, Jimmy, my friend, my age mate, the more you bless him, the more God will bless you. He ain't never given nothing to me. I, I didn't even get a sick piece of cake when they got the cake the other day. See, everybody else got cake but me. We, we, and you're in, and if your country, if the, if the politicians would stop taking money and put it in the, in the collection, you're, Kenya would be debt free. You're one of the most, I've been to 18 African countries. Now there's 55, I guess, maybe 54, it depends on what day it is. Sometimes a country go away and then maybe come back or something, you know. But out of the, all of the countries, even South Africa, do you know that South Africa right now, 12 hours a day, the power is out all over the country. 12 hours a day. Now, how do you run a business that with that? And you, to run a generator 12 hours to keep your business open? It's, it's become impossible. You don't know how blessed you are. Well, they turned the power off the other night, and I just... I mean, you, just hush. You're more blessed than you know. Every one of your neighbors, you're more blessed than them. Every neighbor, every, in the, everyone in the East African community. Kenya is, is the top. Ethiopia has a few more people and maybe a little bit more uh, money, but that's not, it, that, that's not, they don't have the middle class that you have. Do you know what I'm saying? You're blessed. You're highly favored. But if you start becoming greedy, God could withhold his blessing. Greed is very dangerous. 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 10 says, But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and and a snare, and by many foolish and harmful desires that they plunge them into ruin and destruction. If your goal is to get rich, you will come to ruin. Your desire is not to be rich. Your desire is to be a big giver. He will give big money to you when he can trust you with big money. But they're Kenyans that all they talk about is money, 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 money. But if they got it, they won't be happy. Because getting money does not make you happy. Well, listen, I'm proud my son got his first big job. He's 34, 35. How old is he? 35. But he called me uh, two weeks ago and said, Dad, I got that job. I was telling you about, we've been praying and praying and praying. Yeah, and I said, I've been sowing seed for you to get that job. Yeah, that, that one. I got it. And he's now gets 300,000 USD a year plus a bonus. And that kid has never made that kind of money in his lifetime. But he's a giver. He learned from his daddy. He said, I got to start helping you help the Messiah more. Don't focus on, on getting. Focus on 
giving. How many of you would like to increase the amount that you give? You'd like to be able to give more. Just do it. Take, I mean, I'm telling you, men, if you give like I give at times, you're going to get in trouble at home. She might beat you. <laughs> I've had to run from that woman a few times. Because I gave, I gave away, one time I gave away the Christmas money. She said, now how am I supposed to buy Christmas gifts for anybody? You just gave it all away. But you know, we had a Christmas that year. God knows. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't shout me down. Luke 12, 15 says, Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you have. God does not, life does not consist of the abundance of things that we possess. How many of you have, have, have a car? You, you buy a car and it seems that you, it, it, it'll run for a while and then you have to, you end up having to put more money in it to keep it going and I mean, the, you get a new house, and then you got to get a leak in the roof. And you, you, listen, it's not about just getting things. You know, you you've been praying for a new car. Thank God for the one that you have. Thank God. Maybe it'll go an extra hundred thousand kilometers. Maybe God will get more out of it. God knows you want that car. God's not saying no to the car, but God is getting things in line. And sometimes Rhonda and I have had to give things so much to learn that it's not us, it's him. He's the one that blesses us. We don't, we don't deserve or earn or, or expect. It's, it is a gift from God. You've got, you've got some very rich people in this country that, that would trade all of their money for your life. They would give you everything they got to have your health. They would give everything they got to have a happy relationship. But they're greedy. Not this church. We're not greedy, are we? Turn to your neighbor and ask him, are you greedy? Man, some didn't even ask each other. They just looked straight ahead. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 5.10. Those who love money will never have enough. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> If you got 10 million shillings today, it wouldn't be enough. You'd be looking for 11. If you got 100 million, it's not enough. The way that you learn to appreciate and, and are glad for what God has given you is by giving. It's not by receiving more. God will keep, he'll get, listen, it is automatic. If you plant, you harvest. Isn't it? If you put corn in the ground, corn is going to come up out of that ground. You water it, you, you believe God, it'll come up out of the ground. And more comes up than you, you can't outgive God. Turn and turn, tell the neighbor that's not been too nice to you, talk to the other neighbor. And tell him that, that, that God gives back more than you give. Now tell the other neighbor, you can't outgive God. Now you think, you know, Dr. Ron, he's up there and he's, he gets his big paycheck and he's, he's rich. Look, I'm never going to look poor. Never. If I don't have a dollar, you'll never know it. 
Just like if I'm fasting, you'll never know it. Some of y'all look pitiful when you were fasting. <laughs> that was a hard few months. I, I, I don't, I think, I think your time is coming. You know, I, I used to have a, a, a large church, had thousands of people in. We, we got into a, a, there was a season. I wondered why God had led me to build something. And, and it, because it, it forced people to give above their tithe. Do you, do you know what percentage of our church tithe? Over 70%. Do you know what the average number of churches tithing now in America is? 17%. That's why our income was much, much more. We built a hospital in, in China, a 1,200 bed hospital for children, $150 million project, 150 million US dollars. It was the first modern children's hospital ever built in China. And we, we paid cash for it, no debt. And I kept saying, God, how are you, what, where, where, did it, where did it come from? How, how is he doing this? And you're gonna, we're going to wonder about you the same way. How did you get that? How did it happen? Tell us. We want to know. But I'm telling you, it's the givers that are, that, are the, that are the getters. Amen. Aren't you happy, Rhonda? Yeah. Tell me you love me. Huh? Tell them the 12 laws. No, I can't do that. We got five minutes. Tell me you love me again. I love you so much. Are, are you still mad that I gave all that, that, that money away? Yes. <laughs> and you still love me? I might be calling some of y'all saying, can I have the guest room? And I, the look on your face when you looked at that checkbook and there was not, no, there was nothing left. Yeah, you laugh now. I promise you, God will take care of us. Amen. I promise you. It, it's fun when we got to split those sandwiches and, you know, my wife, you know, being a preacher, can't you, it's not all, all, all rainbows and roses. Sometimes it's hard being a preacher. You know, we didn't expect for me to get sepsis seven times in the last year and a half. And sepsis killed my sister. Sepsis is a blood disease. And I overcame it seven times. But do you know how much the, the medication was for all of that? We weren't expecting that. It was about 30,000 shillings for the drips each. So we prayed over the medicine, and I'm still here. But God's going to bring that back. And so we're a little thin. I can tell you there have been services where we put everything we have in the, in the bucket. Everything. And God has not forgot us yet. If you come eat at our house, I don't know where she gets it. But she puts together a great meal for me. A hot meal every day. I'm thankful. Amen. Amen. 
You, you, you're, the best days of your life are coming if you do what I'm sharing. We got two minutes and 44 seconds. We went a little long with our preaching. I mean, our singing. Amen. Do you remember me preaching Proverbs 19 and 7, verse 17? I, you, you all were supposed to memorize it. It was the first sermon I preached here back months ago. He that giveth to the poor lendeth to the Lord and from the Lord will be repaid with interest. It's not, see, it's not natural to give to the poor. It's supernatural. Most people will drive right by. A, a woman, there's, a, there's this old woman. Th this woman, she's probably younger than me, but she looks 90. And she's on the same street corner every day. And every time I go for my walk, I'll, I, I try to bring that woman something. And she is the sweetest woman, but her husband died when she was younger, and she had to raise kids by herself, and she doesn't have much. She's not a beggar. She, she, she'll give you a prayer if you give her something. She, she prays for me. How come you haven't been walking around here? Where, what's, what's happened? Tell me what's happened. I said I, I had sepsis. I was down for about two weeks. She said, come here, let me lay hands on you. And she looks like a pathetic, broken specimen. But she's not begging me for money. She's wanting to know how she can, she can pray. She probably saved my life with her prayer. I got 48 seconds. I, you know, this is, that clock really does, needs to slow down. <laughs> If you, if you need a financial breakthrough, I want you to stand to your feet. Do you guys know what a Pentecostal handshake is? Do you do that here? Do you? You don't know what that is? A Pentecostal handshake is when you, you put a little money in your hand, you hide it, and you go up and shake the pastor's hand. And you say, I, I just, you know, this is just between me and you. Just love you. You need to be given the pastor's Pente Pentecostal handshakes. You don't let, the other hand doesn't even know about it. And don't tell your wife or she'll get mad. She's going to get mad about it. <laughs> but it's through, it's through those small acts that you change people's lives and especially your own. So if you need a financial breakthrough, I want you to lift bo up both hands to heaven where the source is. And I want you just to say a prayer quietly to you, in your heart to God and say, God, what do I need to give to release my blessing? So just l listen to what he's saying to you. Some of you say, I can't hear a thing. Oh, if you listen, what is he saying? Say, I want, it may be give it to the building program. It may be... You know, take care of his business. I don't know what he's going to tell you, but obey him. And he's going to tell you to give something. And I want you to, I want, you know, before Bishop comes back, I want the offerings here to have doubled. And he's not going to worry about Shiloh. Shiloh is going to, is, is, the blessing is coming to Shiloh. But he's going to speak to you right now. Lord, by revelation, by intuition, speak to our hearts what you want us to give that's a little more than what we're doing now. 
And I ask God that as I give that extra, that you take care of me. As I give extra, that you take care of me. I need a car. I need a job. I need, I need money to pay my school bill. I need this. I need that. I, 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 I. I'm not praying about I right now. I'm praying about you. What do you want me to do? And I believe that if I obey you, that you are going to take good care of me. I pray, God, your blessing upon this church. In the name of Jesus, amen.